CataractCoach.com, Yamane Intrascleral Fixation, and this time using the Brian Kim technique to improve the Iowa positioning. So you can see the patient here is aphakic, and there's no lens support at all, no capsular bag, no sulcus, no anterior rim, nothing. So the patient's going to need some sort of fixation. Starting off here with an anterior chamber maintainer. And now marking the conjunctiva appropriately and marking it about two millimeters posterior to the limbus and then those marks are about two millimeters apart. Now that AC maintainer is going to help keep that eye inflated, especially because it looks like it's a unicameral eye, probably already had a vitrectomy. We see a couple of sutures there on the right side of the cornea, the limbal junction there. Now, my critique of doing Yamane is that oftentimes that IOL is floating around in the middle of the vitreous and the hapics are all over the place and you're catching vitreous and tangling it up and getting vitreous traction, but not here because here's what happens in this case. This Brian Kim modification is going in through a paracentesis and grabbing that leading haptic and now pulling it out of the paracentesis and slowly advancing the lens. And notice how the lens is staying planar only right there at the iris plane. And now with the one haptic outside via that paracentesis, now the Yamani technique can be performed. You know, I think this technique does make it significantly easier to manipulate those haptics and get them in the appropriate position without having a risk of the, the lens either falling back or really dangling too much in the mid vitreous. Now you can see the lens optic is a little bit posterior here. And if this is a, was an eye that didn't have a thorough vitrectomy, then that may uh, uh, entangle some vitreous strands in there. But you can see now using that AC maintainer to help kind of support that optic and bring it up. And now there's that first haptic being pulled outside the conjunctiva and the sclera, a little bit of a cautery done to create a little bulbous tip there. And now on the opposite side, again, this is this 30 gauge STK thin walled needle. Make sure you have an appropriate tunnel length there in the sclera. And now that forceps can be used to bring that last haptic here back inside the eye and then pushing it through the hollow lumen of the 30 gauge needle and then bring it outside the eye. So that looks great, very nice technique and so Gosh, I want to commend the surgeon here for doing a great job. And also for Brian Kim, hey, brilliant idea. I like it a lot. Now, you may not do a lot of Yamani cases in your practice, but it's kind of fun to know how to do them and learn from these. You notice here the surgeon now is also closing up that main incision, probably the prior FACO incision. That's the one that the IOL was um, uh, inserted through. And then now looking at the optic positioning, it's pretty good. Remember in Yamane cases, you can often have a little bit different effective lens position. Sometimes the lens sits a little bit deeper in the eye than you're expecting. And you can also have some lens tilt. It's a little bit tough sometimes to get those haptics completely evened out and have the lens completely parallel to the iris, which is your goal. And you can see here now, look at that lens, there's a little bit of a gap there between the IOL optic and the um, iris. And so in a case like this, if you're doing Yamane, don't let the patient end up hyperopic. You may want to just consider bumping up your IOL power. Do the calculations as if it's an in-the-bag placement, and then perhaps don't aim for plano, aim for at least a little myopia, at least a half diopter of myopia, maybe even a pinch more. And that's going to give you a real nice outcome. So here at the end, hydrating up the incisions, looks very stable. Make sure you, you bury that very nicely as well. Make sure there are no bulbous tips. You don't want the end of that haptic to poke through the conjunctiva. You need to make sure that's pushed well within the sclerotunnel and caught in that tunnel. And that'll give the best long-term stability. Great video. Thanks for watching.